Hello, everyone. Um, an impromptu, unscheduled live today. Um, I'm doing a bit of video recording. Um, I'm setting up a new group on my page, which is for people who are experiencing chronic disease. So um, that's called Tapping Yourself to Health. Um, so you're very welcome to join that. It's kind of a bit embryonic, but it'll be flying very soon um, because I really want to help people to start thinking about their health or their sickness in a different way. Um, and that was really prompted by an article that I read yesterday. Um, so, um, and then I just did a welcome video to my page as well. And I thought, well, since I put on the makeup and blow dry my hair, I'd better just do a live today as well. So um, I realized that I hadn't put on makeup for about two weeks. Perhaps it was time to uh, brush up my act. So um, something came up yesterday. I was doing a swap session with the lovely Ruth. And um, it was so interesting. I don't know you guys who are practitioners and do swaps, or even if you see a practitioner, you might have times where you go along and you think, oh, you know, there's not really much. Everything's going well. I don't know what I'm going to work on. Um, and that was me yesterday. You know, life's pretty good, and I couldn't think of anything especially that I needed to work on. Um, but I'd been having quite a bit of very low back discomfort. So I asked if we could work on that. And it was a really profound, fantastic session. And that I see that with my clients so often. You know, you think, oh, there's not really much to go on. And then you just have a massive shift. And I guess that's perhaps because things are going quite well. And so you're ready. You know, you're ready to really clear some rubbish and shift to the next level. So I had a really amazing session with Ruth and I woke up this morning and I realized that actually for maybe weeks or months, I have actually had low grade pain in my back and it become so familiar. It was only when I woke up without it this morning, I thought, wow, that's different. Um, so anyway, just um, a little aside, I'm rambling a little. But um, something that came up in my session yesterday and which I'm really conscious is applicable to so many people um, is about the need to be perfect and letting go of that. Um, and this seems particularly poignant, poignant just before Christmas. Um, I have family members who wrap their presents so beautifully, you know, I they must have a degree in present wrapping um, you know everything is perfect and I even picked up a Spanish magazine last week um, that said perfecto Navidad so perfect Christmas on the front cover so it's not a British thing it's it's, it's worldwide probably this need for perfection um, and in my nice conscious mind I realized of course a long time ago that this is um, going to always lead to disappointment if everything has to be perfect who defines perfect for starters and if you always want everything to be perfect then you are setting yourself up for disappointment because generally speaking things aren't um, this has been really highlighted to me you know I like to do things quite well I pride myself on doing a good job in, in pretty much everything I do um, but living in Spain now um, learning the language slowly. Um, it's, um, you know, I, can't, I have to totally let go of perfection. Um, for me, being able to go into, yesterday we had to take our car, for example, to the equivalent of an MOT, which is a different thing from in England. Um, you actually drive it through all these different processes. But just things like that, having to do something so unfamiliar and in Spanish, just getting through it, um, more or less understanding what was going on, getting the right paperwork at the end, you know, that had to be enough. You know, close enough is good enough was something on one of my Spanish um, workbooks I used to listen to. Um, and I think that's good advice, you know, close enough is good enough. And living here, you know, if I walk out of a shop with what I wanted, <laughs> to get what it was, which I went in to buy, that's great. Um, you know, if someone more or less understands me and we kind of, get a bit of communication then that's good um, you know if we manage to have a little joke and a laugh then that's a bonus but it's so far from perfect so I've had to really adjust to that you know adjust to close enough is good enough or you know being understood is enough um, 
And I think that's what it's about, isn't it? It's about being enough. And that is such a common thing. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not successful enough. I don't have enough clients. You know, and not being enough. Um, and is that what drives our need for perfection? I think maybe it is. So I just really wanted to have a little chat about that today. Um, and perhaps get you to, we'll do a little tapping on that, and perhaps get you to tune in to, if you can think of an event, a time, it might be very recent, where you felt you weren't perfect. You, you wanted perfection. Um, you wanted to do the perfect session. And actually, just on an aside, um, what I see so often with my trainee practitioners is that they say, oh, I don't think that session went well. And then they hear back from the client that that session was awesome. You know, and I've had clients in all my years of practice that I've thought, you know, I'm not sure why they keep coming. I don't feel I'm making a difference. And then they send along their best friend who says, oh, so-and-so says that you saved her marriage. It's like, really? <laughs> you know, um, and you, where you have no concept, no idea of what difference you're making to people. So our perception of maybe how a session goes or how beautiful the Christmas table looks or how lovely the presents look when they're all wrapped and stacked under the tree. You know, we, we live in this world, don't we, um, driven by media, social media and the mainstream media where everybody has the perfect face, the perfect body, the perfect clothing, the, the perfect outfit for the Christmas party, where the Christmas dinner is cooked to perfection. You know, how often do we hear that word? So, um, what I want to do today is encourage you to um, let go of that and let let it be good enough. You know, let it be okay to not be 100%, but to be 80 or 70 or 60. It doesn't matter. So let's just sit with that for a minute. So can you tune into something, an event, um, maybe a recent one, maybe an old one, where you felt you let yourself down, you felt you weren't perfect enough, you weren't good enough? Things weren't perfect. Tune into that. Tune into the energy of that. Close your eyes if you wish. Take a couple of nice, slow, deep breaths. And it's uncomfortable there, yeah? It's not a nice place to be. That's okay. Just sit with that discomfort just for a moment. Give yourself permission. And another breath. It happened. You felt those feelings. That's okay. Let's just start tapping on the outside of your hand. Just begin to tap there. Tuning into that uncomfortable feeling when you were not perfect. For most of us, that's actually not 100% of our day, probably, but yeah. Just tuning into that. Where you feel, perhaps you let yourself down, you didn't do enough, and perhaps you didn't. On that day, perhaps you're a bit off color, you weren't at your peak. Perhaps that's okay. Did anybody die? Quite likely not. And if they did, would they have died anyway? Quite probably. Yeah. Tap on the top of the head. Keeping hold, keeping awareness of those emotions, of those feelings. Tapping on the inside of the eyebrow. Just sitting with that, mm, that feeling, that lack of perfection. Tapping outside the eye. Tapping under the eye. Tapping under the nose. Sitting with the feeling, notice where you feel it. Tapping under the mouth. And if you can identify where you feel those negative feelings, unwanted feelings, I'll call them actually. Tapping under the collarbone. For those of you who don't like tapping pots, I'll just move that down. It's just about an inch below the collarbone here. Tapping under the arm. We'll call them unwanted feelings. And then tap across the inside of the wrist. Just sitting with that need for perfection and that feeling that you didn't achieve it that day. And tapping next to each thumb, each the thumbnail rather, and each finger in turn. So where are you feeling those unwanted feelings? And does there have, is there a colour 
associated with those feelings, there might not be. It's not a problem. Knee to finger and turn. And back to the outside of the hand. Just sitting with those feelings. Okay, just tune in again and just see if there's a number between one and ten. The level at which you feel those feelings tends the, the worst, shall we say, the highest. Just tune into where that is. Notice again where you feel the feelings that day where you perhaps weren't perfect, weren't good enough, weren't enough. Let's just do another round of tapping on that. And as you tap, just ask perhaps your subconscious mind if there's an earlier time in your life when you felt like this, when perhaps you were told by somebody, might have been a sibling, might have been a parent, might have been a teacher, when you were told you weren't good enough, maybe you were told you were stupid, maybe you were told you were silly, maybe you were told you couldn't concentrate, maybe you were told you weren't good enough, maybe you were compared to your prettier little sister or your clever older brother or your more athletic next door neighbour, whatever it is, just tune in, see if there's a memory that pops up. And if that memory does pop into your head, just ask your subconscious mind, how old was I, unless you already know. Just get an awareness of your age when that event happened. Okay. And if you've got an event, I just want you to do the next thing. If you haven't got an event, I just want you to keep your um, focus on what you're feeling now when you think about not being perfect, not being good enough, and just keep tapping through the points. Just do a couple more rounds of tapping. If you have a memory of being told or making that belief that you weren't good enough, not perhaps because anyone said anything, but because of something they said about someone else. Oh, she's always so pretty and so well turned out. Or she has the lovely shoes or such beautiful curly blonde hair when you've got dark spray hair or whatever. You know, so that all the assumptions that you made on that day, let's bundle them all in together. Let's bundle all those feelings, perhaps of hurt, perhaps of dismissal, perhaps of just not being good enough. Let's bundle all those feelings of little you together. And let's just tap through them. Imagine you're tapping on little you who makes all those assumptions that day. Just tap on her and you might want to talk to her. What would you say, or him? What would you say to little you? Knowing all that you know now, all your wisdom. Is she a good girl? Is he a clever boy? Were they athletic? Were they as athletic as they needed to be? Did it matter that they lost the egg and spoon race on sports day? You know, just talk to them as you would talk to a child of that age now, if you were talking to a child that was upset. Just giving them the bigger picture from your adult perspective. imagine you're tapping on them and you might want to imagine you're giving them a great big hug and you'll probably find that the little you will shift the emotions really quickly which is great so let that happen you might invite them to shove all those emotions in a great big balloon and ask them what color they'd like the balloon to be let's put those emotions in a great big balloon Let's put in some helium and we'll let it go. And it's, of course, a beautiful biodegradable balloon that's not going to cause any harm to the environment wherever it ends up. And they can let it go. Your little you can let it go and watch it float away and let go of all those feelings that perhaps have been carried around for years, decades. Great. So what I'd love you to do now is I want you to think of perhaps something that's coming up, an event, might be Christmas, might be your most critical family member looking at your 
mm, wrapped up present that might be a tad mediocre. Um, whatever. It might be something you've got coming up with work. It might be a social engagement that you're feeling a bit uncomfortable about. Perhaps everybody else is so beautiful and so glamorous and you're going to be there feeling a bit frumpy and a bit plump and a bit whatever. That's okay. Just think about something that's coming up for you. It might be that you've got to do a talk or run a course and you're feeling pretty apprehensive. Something that you feel where you feel that you need to be perfect or your best version of yourself. And I want you to see yourself at that event, in that moment, being much less than perfect. Seeing yourself being 50% of your best self, 50% of perfect. Perhaps not with your skirt tucked in your knickers by mistake, but you know, your shoes are a bit scuffed and your mascara's fun. And see what that brings up for you. You're doing a talk and you forget your lines. <gasps> so just sit with that, that future event and you're far from perfect. What does that bring up? Give that a number from one to 10 and just tap through the points as you tune into the energy of not being perfect, of being far off perfect. See that event panning out, forgetting your lines, runny mascara, the wrong outfit for the occasion. We've all done that, haven't we? Which always puts me in mind of that Bridget Jones film when she turns up as a bunny girl that a, she thought was a fancy dress party and it wasn't. You see how much worse it could be? <laughs> Sit with the feeling. That uncomfortable feeling. That's not nice. That is not a nice place to be. And then ramp yourself up from 50% of perfect, perhaps to 60, and see how much better that is. So you only forget a few of your lines, and perhaps someone helps you out. And your outfit's maybe not quite what it could have been at that family party. And Auntie Mabel is only a little bit critical of your present wrapping. And no one actually gets food poisoning from your Christmas dinner. So, you know, it's okay. They might have mild tummy aches, but... <laughs> It'll be all right. You can blame it on too much drink. So just sit with that and now ramp that up to 70%. So, you know, there's 30% that's not perfect. How much better does that feel? How much better is it to be 70% of perfect? But that feels actually pretty good. Yeah. And you might want to bring in something that actually makes the situation quite lighthearted. So if you've got a favourite comedian, you might want to bring them in to tease Auntie Maud about the present wrapping and that it's so important to her. Or if you're worried about cooking the Christmas dinner, perhaps bring in your favourite celebrity chef. I always think Nigella would be good for, good for a laugh. You all have terribly nice friends. Or if you're worried about the Christmas party, you know, who could come with you? Who could be a talking point? Have you got a pet? You could take your pet with you. Your hamster. Your pet snake. That would cause a stir. No one would be looking at your outfit then, would they? Or perhaps bring your favourite comedian along to that one as well. If you're doing a work thing, a talk, a presentation that makes you feel a bit apprehensive, you know, what, what would help? Would you like to have a colleague there helping you? Imagine that. How would that feel? And where does that put your percentage out of 100? Or does perfect not matter anymore? Quite likely, not too much. Okay, good. So we're just going to finish this round of tapping and then I want you to tune in with the event where you started. So if you can remember, where did we begin? We started with something that happened probably quite recently where you felt you weren't at your best. You didn't do your best. You weren't your best self. So just take a couple of breaths. And 
notice your feet on the floor and just tune into the memory of when you did something fairly recently and you thought I could have done that better. And how does that feel now? And I can pretty much guarantee that will feel different from how it felt when you tuned into it a few minutes ago. And quite likely, so the most likely things, but yours might be different and I'd love to hear. The most likely things that you can't really remember anyway, that's common, or that, oh, well, it doesn't really matter. You know, it really isn't that important in the grand scheme of life. So tune in to what that feels like now. You know, and it was okay, wasn't it? You got through it, everybody else got through it. We all survived to see another day. I know that because you're here. So just tune into that feeling and, that, and just notice what emotions come up there. That might be relief. That might be like, yeah, actually, that's okay. And now think about your future event and take that feeling with you. And send that into the future event, whether it's the Christmas party, the cooking, the Christmas dinner, Aunt Maud opening her present, um, the presentation, the, the talk at work, whatever it is. Just take that feeling, send it into that future event. And go beyond that future event, go past it and see what people are saying to you. Because how many Christmas dinners can you actually remember? What do you remember? What are your best Christmas memories? Are they the ones where you played the silliest games and had the best laugh? Do you ever remember the most perfect meal, the most elaborate crackers, the most beautifully wrapped presents? I can guarantee you don't. I can guarantee that the ones you really remember are either the ones where something awful happened or the ones where you had the best time. So just sit with that feeling. And every day, preferably twice, excuse me, <clears throat> when you wake up and when you go to bed are the best times to do this. I want you to bring in that good feeling, that feeling of relief or that feeling of acceptance, whatever it is, and just imagine infusing that from the top of your head, you can do it now, bring that in from the top of your head, imagine that feeling infusing every cell of your body top of your head, all the way to the tips of your toes, down to your fingers, through any bits of your body that felt a bit uncomfortable when you tuned into the problem. Let's get that in there. Lovely. I'm trying to do that twice a day keeping the focus on the positive feeling. So the idea is we clear out the negative and then we, we focus on replacing that with something much better. And remember what it said in my Spanish good book, close enough is good enough. And it is so true, that is so true. Whatever it is you're doing, working with clients, cooking a meal, going to a party, giving a talk, whatever aspect of life, close enough is good enough. And the people that judge you are the ones that have their own stuff. So, you know, you can let go of that. So, thank you for being here and joining me. I hope you've got a beautiful day there. I've got a lovely day here. The sun's shining. So, I'm thinking I might have to get outside for a walk in a little while. And uh, sending you lots of love and a happy Christmas. And, um, yeah, leave comments, feedback. Let me know how it was for you. I'd love to hear. And take care. See you soon.